Thank you very much and welcome to the meeting floor. Um, this is a special meeting of the Board of Directors. It's a public hearing on draft mitigated negative declaration of an environmental impact from the Learning Community Services District Park Maintenance Facility Replacement Project. Um, let's uh, go over the procedures of our meeting so we're all on the same page. Um, everybody will have the opportunity to speak. Um, I would like for all of us to respect one another and give uh, each person about five minutes to make a point. Um, as any board meeting, uh, the point of the meeting is not to have a discussion among yourselves, but rather address the board, and then the board or the staff can reply. So I, um, I would kindly request that we don't have a cross-conversation going on because of mainly the respect for our staff's time. Um, again, five minutes, and um, it, again, it will be upon me to recognize uh, whenever it's your turn to speak. Uh, right, so now moving on to item C, the presentation of draft mitigated negative declaration of environmental impact. It's a multiple. Um, again, I am required to read um, the first paragraph of the document that I hope you all familiar familiarize yourselves with. Um, there's plenty of documents on our website and we keep uh, referring to this as the uh, source of objective information, factual information, so please go there if um, you need information. Anywho, um, here's the notice of availability of draft mitigated negative declaration of environmental impact and notice of public hearing for Marine Park Maintenance Facility Replacement Project. Notice is hereby given that Marine Community Services District proposes to complete a project to replace their existing park maintenance facility with a new park maintenance <coughs> facility. The project involves removal of the existing park maintenance facility's modular building and the park maintenance facility's storage sheds, fence storage enclosure and storage bins located adjacent to the banks of Miller Creek and restoration of the area to a natural setting. Two non-native pine trees located some distance from the creek bank will be removed. A new 2,500 square foot storage shed shop and approximately 1,960 square foot fence storage enclosure are proposed. The subject property is located at 775 Miller Creek Road, San Rafael, California, and is also identified as Assessor Parcels Number APN 1642035. The um, public review period um, is open until July 31st, 2018 at 4 p.m. Um, the met mitigated negative declaration finds that the project would result in potentially significant environmental impacts related to topical issues 1, 5, 8, 15, and 16 below and identifies feasible mitigation measures to avoid or reduce to a level of insignificance the environmental impacts. Again, I call your attention to the fact that um, this is by no means a decision-making meeting where um, any call to action will be taken. Um, it is barely to, for us to hear your concerns. And um, again, I would focus your concerns on the environmental impact of this proposed development rather than this design, because the design is really not finalized. It's just a draft. It's a proposal. Um, also, um, this topic will be um, picked up at our next regular board meeting, to which you all cordially invited, as always. Um, and um, it will be on August 14th at 7 p.m. 7.30 p.m. Um, what else do we need to say? Oh, and if you would like to submit any written comments, uh, please feel free to do so. Um, please direct them to the district manager who forwards them to the board. Um, and again, we'll be collecting your opinions and concerns and we do take them all into consideration. Having had this nice morning Excuse along, me, what's the date, the last date we could send them in? Uh, it's the July 31st at 4 p.m. Okay, thank you. Excuse me. 
I have a question. Is that regarding the environmental impact thing or whatever the topic of the next meeting is going to be? No, no, that's just that's, environmental impact. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Um, usually, if you would like to bring something to be picked up at the board uh, meeting, um, I believe our cutoff is 72 hours before uh, the meeting, just so we can comply with Brown Act and post everything and make sure that um, everything is legit. Yeah. Um, thank you for your attention. Um, so moving on to item D, which is the public comment on draft <coughs> mitigated negative declaration. Sorry, present. Oh, yeah, presentation of the draft mitigated negative. Uh, can I just not say that? <laughs> uh, presentation of draft mitigated negative declaration of environmental impact. And I will turn to Eric. Sure. Um, the draft mitigated negative declaration as uh, obviously uh, it's been posted, it's been distributed, it's been noticed, it was uh, included as a uh, legal notice in the Marin Independent Journal, it was sent to all environmental regulatory agencies listed in the initial study, and then it was also uh, uh, provided to uh, other applicable groups in the area as well as sent out directly uh, notice to everybody who's on the email agenda distribution list for uh, board agendas. The, uh, uh, what, was what was taken, what was performed prior to the initial study being produced were uh, multiple studies. Uh, one of the biological <coughs> assessment that was performed by an agency known as Pernusky Chatham. Another was an archaeological and cultural resources assessment that was done by a group archaeological resource services. Uh, and there were also uh, Marine County codes that were quoted in here as well and referenced. The, uh, again, this focuses on the environmental impact. It does not focus on any levels of design impact uh, that goes into it. Uh, again, that will be uh, presented to the board for uh, discussion and consideration uh, at a later date, depending on what comes back from this. And hopefully we can kind of turn those things around uh, based on environmental comments and concerns. Thank you, Eric. Um, let me just Point uh, order. OK, go um, You're done, right? Sure. OK. Um, would the board like to um, comment on the report? No, I want to hear a little comment. Okay, thank you. Let's open public comments. Stephen, you can. It's not. It's it's not a comment. It's a point of order. I, I just want a clarification. You say that uh, the design is not included, but of course the size and uh, of the design and its siting would be considered this part of the EIR. Is that correct? The site is. As part of the EIR, um, but this also the size because that's it, it, it is referenced in the initial study as well as the uh, declaration itself. Yes, yes to what? Yes, the size of the facility as well as the siting is referenced in the okay. study. In it. Okay, so comments are appropriate. Okay, Thanks. so would you like to start us off or with somebody else? I Please, go ahead. I've been watching Senate hearings on TV lately, so I'm going to take <laughs> my entire five minutes and pass me stuff. Oh. Okay. That's legal. So you got ten minutes. Five. Unless anybody else wants to do it. Jeez. Well, I didn't finish my homework. Okay. So, <laughs> so I, I'm, I'm happy to speak, but um, but actually, my, I, I have a lot of detailed uh, comments, but um, I was going, this evening, I'm going to just sort of characterize them in general, and specifically, um, specific comments will be uh, mailed to you. Uh, roughly, um, what I want to sp speak about is uh, the following topics. The proximity to the creek and the violation of the stream conservation ordinance. The mapping data, which is insufficient and appears to be uh, using an uh, dated USGS map uh, that, by the way, is uh, not the survey. The survey sits on top of the map, so whatever 
if there's bad data underneath it, uh, it may be in the right place of the earth, but if the stream course has changed, if the, the stream bank has changed, that is really the, uh, the concern. Uh, we're also, I'm also concerned with drainage, sedimentation, and erosion. Uh, the new roof area is 50% larger than the existing roof area. Um, the current impacts of this, this site, uh, the current site, are exaggerated, and some of the future impacts are ignored. They don't uh, indicate the outdoor storage of vehicles and where equipment will be stored, and this has impact. In fact, it's grossly inconsistent because it's recognized in the current um, uh, maintenance shed, but not the future maintenance shed. It's not indicated on the site. Um, the Marinwood CSD has a pattern and practice of poor environmental stewardship, and we have examples of that, and also the lack of public process and the suppression of public notice. And I have examples of that as well. Um, the, the plan is too small, the impacted area is too small because the design, and now we're learning that the design intent has changed, but the initial design was for a multi-use bi building. Um, but the only place for turning around a 22-foot Ford F-250 is in the meadow. And so this should also be included in the impact to our open space. Now our immediate neighbors have legitimate concerns of noise, nesting birds, and viewscapes. And I, while we're not commenting on a specific design, certainly uh, a mass 4,400 square foot compound is going to impact uh, the neighbor use scale. Uh, it spans, well, two full lots plus a lot on either side, so you could say four lots, um, plus uh, uh, that area is heavily used by pedestrians, hikers, dog walkers, uh, cyclists, you name it. That's a very popular area of the park. So we're taking away a very important uh, part of our resource here. When you think about it, this is a 14-point, 12-acre uh, lot, this lot. And uh, we have about six improved acres and about seven unimproved acres, and the that compound plus the, the compacted area and everything that they use there is currently about an acre, and it, it'll be grow to probably an acre and a half. We don't know because it hasn't been defined, and that's where the key uh, the key problem I have is we don't have enough information. Now you have said that. Uh, you're the sole objective source of information, and yet dimensions are missing. We don't have, uh, we, we never were able to write story poles. In fact, uh, the lot markers that uh, citizens have used to try to visualize the space have been uh, taken up, and also uh, notices to neighbors about this meeting tonight have been removed. So. There's been a, a very much a control of information, and I'm sorry to say it is not objective. We can question or not whether or not our workers who spend 95% of the time in the field need a dedicated workshop. I believe they, I believe this facility is in fact designed maybe for something else because it was none other than the architect himself who advocated uh, the elimination of the maintenance department while he was on the board. The cost is another issue, and we don't have a budget. Uh, that's not an environmental issue, but uh, it will uh, indicate how much construction happens in that area. This is about our future. This is about our children's future. This is about who we are as a community. And uh, I... Uh, going to keep my comments short tonight, and I will give you some more detailed comments in a written 
letter, but I have nothing further to say. And I hope you listen to the rest of us because those of us who know what is happening um, in detail are concerned. Uh, maybe there's a couple supporters here. But uh, this is a really an item that should go before the general public. Uh, it's, it's a major, major deal for our community. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Welcome. Hi. Sorry. Sorry, I am tardy. I'm just jumping in here. Are we on an public comment? Okay, public comment. Okay, so thank you for your comments, Stephen. Other public comments? Is, well, is this public comment or is this comment on the facility? Yeah. It's public comment on draft, so item D on the agenda is public comment on draft mitigated negative declaration of environmental impact. I'm sorry, I don't have the agenda in front of me. If you would like to comment on the environmental impact, now would be your time to speak. Great, thanks. Okay, so the negative declaration. Perfect. And I'm going to set my timer. Um, so we just in case you know the rules. I only have two, um, two items right now that I want to talk about. But first, I do want to say that the drawings definitely have misleading dimensions and creek setbacks. For example, the southeastern corner of the current fence storage area sits right on the top of the creek bank, not four feet behind it, as shown in the drawings, because I measured with my stick. And the western storage shed that floods is not drawn to scale. It looks like it's square on the drawing, but it's actually almost twice as long as it is wide. So I just want to let you know that it's hard for some of us to understand by looking at the drawing what's really true and what's not true because it's just a little off. But I only have two comments about two items right now. One of them is about soil removal behind the new facility. And I'm going to read this just so I can go fast because I know you're timing me. Um, there's no real facility design yet, so we'll have to use the numbers from the one design that's already been presented by the architect. The facility back end, the north side, that will be built six to eight feet from two neighboring residential parcels is approximately 160 feet long. And that includes the 40 by 80 foot central building plus two partially enclosed end storage units. The length from the fence to the existing park driveway is approximately 28 feet on a sloped bank. So I have to assume that in order to build a on the level ground, a very large amount of soil must be removed from the sloped area 28 by 160. Uh, the soil will be removed down several feet from beneath the bottom of the neighbor's fences. And I'm sure that trees and other tall vegetation will also be removed, not just those two pine trees that everybody keeps talking about. So I'm very concerned that um, neighbors overhead branches, tree roots growing throughout the soil, all that kind of stuff. All this, the extra trees that now provide a little bit of scenery um, will also be removed. The building center will be constructed on a 40 by 80 foot concrete slab and have a possible, possible, because we don't know what the roof is, is yet, 4,600 square foot roof sloping backwards towards the neighbors. And what I'm thinking is mitigation should be considered to prevent the 160 feet of fence damage, also to prevent rain runoff damage all around due to the new large roof and the concrete floor areas. And in my opinion, removing so much soil will decrease the groundwater absorption and the tree, there will be tree imbalances caused by chopping off branches. Damage and possible death can be caused by removing some of the tree roots as they're going down to level off the area. So that's one of my concerns, is soil removal. The second concern is the swamp. There's a swamp area east of the trailer and it's been there for decades. I don't know if you guys have walked through it and stepped in the muck and stuff, but I just did yesterday with the dog. 
Um, it's in the facility construction site and it starts at the eastern end unit of the new facility, covering a sloping area of approximately 30 feet by 30 feet. So it's a pretty big swampy area and it's even swampy right now. You know, and there's a telephone pole that doesn't have anything on it, doesn't work. It surrounds, the swamp surrounds this telephone pole. And it's between the neighbor's fence and the existing driveway. Even in the middle of the summer, like yesterday, the area is swampy, muddy, and sinks down when walked upon by a 50-pound dog. Okay, so coincidentally, there's also a long white pipe sticking out from the creek bank that drains into Miller Creek just opposite this swampy area. And the reason for the swamp and the drain pipe is unknown to me. I've never asked, I, I don't know, I just assume it's always been there, big deal. However, as depicted in the architect drawings, the eastern end unit of the new facility opens directly into the swamp. The, and that's the yard where supposedly we're gonna have materials, material yard. It opens directly into the swamp, which will be used by park trucks emptying into and picking up materials from the yard. I only have one more paragraph. Soils, soil will be removed when the swampy area is leveled for access to and from the driveway. Who knows what will be found underground with the swamp and the drain pipe. I don't know how far the drain pipe goes. But mitigation must be considered before any soil removal and leveling can be done. We need to determine the reason for the swamp and also the reason for the drain pipe should be determined and the contents of the drain pipe that flows into Miller Creek should be identified. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I see a hand back there. Did you want to speak? Um, no, thank you. Can I comment as a commissioner? Absolutely. Uh, I just want to thank you for putting this project forward and going through the environmental review. Um, I think I agree with Stephen's comment about the future of Marinwood, I feel like if we don't address this, it's a liability we can't afford. And I think we have to act now. So I just want to thank you for taking the thoroughness and all the steps to go through the process. Thanks. I'm concerned about the soil removal too because it will be right behind my house. I have a huge elm tree or, and Cutting into any you know roots that are probably scattered all out there will kill it, and then it may possibly fall on my house and kill me. speak as the uh, as a resident 14 years here and uh, to become the architect for the record uh, but in this case I'd like to speak as a resident and um, I've been waiting for something to be done about this shed forever um, I think any other place uh, the idea that a removing this existing shed and replacing it with something else uh, would be anything less than just the best thing to do, the smart thing to do, wisest thing to do, reducing liabilities to the district is just, you know, it just, we wouldn't be going through this process. I'm glad we're going through the process because it's part of what we have to do, but um, in speaking in, in terms of the uh, support of the, the report, I'd say all of the factors that are listed as, uh, you know, less than significant or relevant, I completely agree with. I think the you know, mitigated ones are, uh, um, you know, easily mitigated. Um, just staying back and looking at what you see when you walk into the park in terms of uh, just a dump, uh, which is not a proper entrance to what is otherwise a lovely trail. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, sure. <coughs> so that's when you're standing right, right at the gate. So when you stand at the gate and look, you just see a dump. And when you walk through there, the doors are open, the employees have to work, walk around uh, people, people have to walk around the employees. Um, and, and the trucks, it's, it's dangerous, it's a liability to the district, it's gone on too long, it needs to go. And uh, completely in favor of having, you know, however long discussions about the budget and the uh, design and whatever should we replace it, but sticking to, the, to the, uh, you know, the report itself and the idea of environmental concern 
in my opinion, uh, and the people that I've talked to, anything less uh, um, than replacement of this thing is just uh, not, not acceptable. Um, since it's already been mentioned in, in a couple of the other comments going into the territory of, of uh, design and how the future of another building at that site might impact, uh, again, relative to what's there, it's laughable that, that, uh, that this would be anything less than an improvement. All of the, uh, the things that I've heard commented so far about potential impacts of new construction are all things that are standard uh, in the construction industry of having to deal with in terms of good due diligence in, in construction. For example, the uh, um, uh, site conditions and, and any kind of uh, movement of, of soil there are all part of a proper uh, structural plan for the new building as well as um, construction best practices. Um, this is a relatively flat site. Any kind of removal of, of the minimal or movement of the minimal soil uh, there uh, is, is not a challenge given my 30 years of it plus of experience in terms of dealing with much more difficult sites. <coughs> and also dealing with things like keeping trees, protecting trees, proper arborist report for, for conditions that are there um, would solve all those things. So that's not a reason to not accept the uh, general notion that um, replacing this existing uh, building, which is you know, too close to the creek and uh, is, you know, it's just a safety problem, liability problem for other reasons, um, you know, should, you know, that should proceed. Um, things like the, you know, the size of the roof, I mean, you, you basically you have an existing tarped roof for, for years has no proper direction of drainage. I mean, the idea of a newly designed roof that would have a drainage system that works its way in and is, is engineered by a civil engineer to properly drain and accommodate soil conditions and the particular slope of the site, et cetera, it's no brainer. That's part of, of practice of the next phase of you know, design approval and construction. All those things have to live by standards of the, of the county of Marin. Um, and uh, so when they're mentioned here as potential reasons for not removing uh, you know, this existing structure, to me it's, uh, you know, that's, that's easily taken care of and protected um, by, by current standards compared to the standards of construction years ago. The, you know, when I hear about um, you know, a swamp, which I don't believe exists, uh, I would just say that the, uh, you know, a new on-grade on slab uh, would basically be designed to deal with, again, whatever the compression uh, of the soil and the soil conditions are. So, um, and then finally, look, you know, we need, if, if we are going to have employees, which is what the board has uh, been supportive of uh, for a number of years and, and keeping a minimum staff here, they need to have safe working conditions, uh, which do not exist in the, in the existing building. Um, it's, it's unhealthy, it's unsafe, it's, as, we, as I've said, it's a liability for the district for years. Um, the next phase of, of, of moving forward with some, you know, replacement, what that looks like, um, I, you know, I, I'm familiar with the, if, from the program and from dealing with the staff in terms of design, what they need to just do their jobs. And what was presented in this report as a, as a mass of a building is minimally what they need to, uh, to do their jobs. And so I ask you to, um, you know, support uh, and, and approve this document and, uh, and move forward with coming up with a, a safer structure. Excuse me. Just wanted to know how much time you're giving people. Ah, thank you. So, um, I have a comment to make, but I want to respect your agenda for tonight. This is regarding the DIR, but I would like to just respond to Bill. Is that okay in 30 seconds? 30 seconds, yes. Bill. Try to keep it or, or board. Yeah, because mm -hmm. it, it is all in the next Okay, working. but the door is open here just to crap. Nobody that I know of disputes that that shed should not be removed and upgraded. Everybody's in agreement with that. Mm -hmm. Probably everyone here is in agreement with that. This is where, I don't want to go overboard, it's the dimensions and the size. That's all I want to say. Don't confuse that. Thank you. Other comments? I step one. I submitted my comments and everything to Eric earlier today, and I support what's been said uh, by the people this evening. Uh, my name is Eric Bingham. I'm the new homeowner that has is, has a proposed has a proposed unit in my new backyard uh, at five six five Quietwood. Uh, so I've only known about this for a day now. Um, so <laughs> that aside, I just wanted to, from the information that I have, reading through the information today, 
uh, as it relates to the env environment. I don't know if I can ask questions or is this just comments that I would propose to have these questions answered at some point by the board in terms of process? Uh, at this point, this hearing is for comment. I would suggest, and I'm happy to give you my contact information, okay. and uh, you can come to me and ask what questions you may have. Okay. Uh, welcome to the neighborhood, by the way. Thank you. And then, uh, if you want to submit a written comment, they carry. The written comments carry all the same weight. Awesome. Yeah. Um, so yeah. one one question that I have is in reading through the environmental report and the removal of the two trees. I didn't notice any other trees being mentioned. And when I look at the trees adjacent to the, the back of my fence, just purely of account, there's nine trees. One, seven are narrow in nature, and I have pictures of them. I can submit it or I can send it to you either way. Um, I can just pass it around. Um, so there's seven narrow trees and two larger ones. I think one of those is the oak. I'm not, um, as, as I said, I'm a new homeowner. I can't, I'm not good at identifying trees yet. Um, but I believe of those nine trees, the only one that's been called out has been one of those. So from an environmental, putting aside the design aesthetic and, and the viewscape, um, that's especially concerning for me from an environmental perspective. Uh, so as it relates to the soil and removal and doing the due diligence in terms of putting in a new building, I would assume those would need to be moved or trimmed or something as it relates to creating that space for the new building. The second piece is I have two larger trees uh, in my own property too that hang, overhang uh, the property that I believe that those would probably also be adversely impacted and need to be trimmed. Um, like I said, I'm not going to comment on the viewscape right now, um, but that's another area where that would be now 11 trees that potentially adversely impacted by um, the addition of, of this unit as I understand it right now. Um, questions that I have as it relates to feedback, you know, I understand this process has been going on for more than a year and a half now and I just wanted to say for the record, I'm, I'm supportive of, you know, having a place for the maintenance workers to, where they feel safe and they can do their job well done. Many of us are, are still working and, and having that type of environment is incredibly important. Uh, as it relates to s design, I don't want to comment on that now, but I know size was touched upon. Uh, my understanding in terms of the height, I couldn't find the proposed height of the design, um, but as it relates to the, to the environment, is, is I believe the, the, the height of the current unit was increased in height due to more maintenance related issues, so I just want to make sure for the record that we anchor in what was the original unit and not stop gaps in order to make the, the, the unit continue to be functional. 15 feet. So I, yeah, so I believe it increased to 15 feet. Um, the peak is at 15 feet, it goes down to 11 feet for a pitched roof as opposed to the existing, which is flat. Flat at 15. No, flat at. Okay, so flat at for some shape. Shape. I mean, it's not feasible to continue flat, it's just. Okay. Uh, and my last, I guess, question that I wanted to leave or I guess the last point is as it relates to sound and light, um, as it relates to the environment, I saw, I, I read about uh, motion sensors where ambient light in, lighting would be reduced a, as necessary. Uh, when you go, what I loved about this neighborhood, it's nice and dark and you see, you see the stars. I just want something to, to call that out in terms of the environment of, of ongoing lights in our backyard when outside everyone else is, is otherwise quite flat. Am I good on time? Do I have a few more seconds? And the last piece was sound, um, just recurring sound. Background, it's a nice, quiet neighborhood, so it's not to disrupt that. And my last question is, as it relates to feedback, I would love to understand, as part of the feedback collection, you know, I've seen in multiple documents of how uh, feedback from the community, immediate neighbors is incredibly important. And I would love to understand to what degree we have an impact. Like, if for example, worst case scenario, I say no matter what, under no circumstances do I want anything outside of my fence versus, hey, you know, if you're gonna cut down a couple trees, is there a mitigating action um, where we can meet in the middle to plan so as not to totally impact the environment? So those are just open questions to understand the process better. Thank you. Other comments from the public? Ray Barber from the uh, Mill Creek Winter Tech Stewards. 
Uh, our only concern is getting rid of like there. It's uh, damaging the creek. We all know that. We've all agreed upon it should be removed. Let's get on from moving that. I don't know how you can have a negative impact environmental study without having a design of the building first. concern with all the young families that are moving back into the area with their families. My son lives a block away from me and he told me that it's a sense of community and family. Now my, uh, my concern is what's going to happen to the fortune pits down there that we <laughs> made up there and it's a gathering place for the guys on Friday and, we're, and for fundraisers too. Will that be impacted? No. Well, I'll tell you, the, 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 uh, sorry, forgive me, just one or order, just answer. Yes, no. Some questions have been answered, but um, but the design doesn't impact that particular area. You know, it might because be something that could actually curious be. curious about that, you know? Yeah. Well, I'm glad that you asked the question, and I'm glad to hear the answer. It was considered part of an essential part of any kind of new design or <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the impact of fire battle impact. Oh, yeah. Okay, good. Did you have anything else? No, I wavered my uh, my extra minutes to anybody that wants to use them. Go ahead. She won't let you. Okay. I'll use a few of them. First of all, I want to actually uh, reinforce what uh, John said uh, about uh, Bill's comment. We all want a new chef. <clears throat> if we could just agree to that one thing, I think all of us could shake hands and walk out the door happily. Really, this, this issue is a question of siting and putting it in the most environmentally uh, uh, sensitive place and uh, size, the footprint. We, we love the park and the park maintenance serves the park. And so anything that impedes that is really against, uh, in my view, the public policy and the intent of the park. So that's that's. That's where I see the disagreement. And if we can focus on a better solution, we can all be happy. And yes, we can be proud of our future. Thank you. I love it. What a positive note to, um, I guess, wrap up public comment. If I don't hear any further public comment, then Eric, procedurally, do we, what, what's next? Well, as Isabella mentioned, I mean, this uh, topic will be continued at the August 14th board meeting, uh, once all, uh, once the comment period is ended, all the comments will be consolidated. Uh, they will then be uh, presented uh, to the board uh, in, in accordance with how the process under CEQA works um, and the mitigated negative declaration will be presented to the board. And again, once all comments are taken in, um, analyzed and then reviewed to see if there are additional mitigation factors that could be uh, needed or not. Sound about right? Sounds good, thank you. Do I have a motion to adjourn? So moved. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you all for coming tonight.